So the other day, I was, you know, I don't know, watching a podcast or whatever, and somebody brought up the fact that depression tends to be about perspective. And when they said that, everything clicked together. I thought of anime like Neon Genesis Evangelion. I thought of manga like Oyasumi Pum Pum, and I said, yeah, that seems appropriate. I think depression is definitely about a certain perspective and sharing that perspective. It's really about empathizing, resonating with that feeling, that feeling of depression. But what's interesting about that is that there usually is kind of a sense of unity when it comes to that. A lot of people really enjoy shows about depression when they are in that depressive state but for me personally there is this one manga that is the exception to the rule and i really would call it one of the most depressing manga out there that manga is himizu so himizu is about this kid he is in high school and he is the very stereotypical uh, drama main protagonist guy like he's eccentric he has a unique worldview he's surrounded by friends that are a little off kilter they get into wacky misadventures etc 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 then his mom leaves him and you're like okay uh, I, I would say unexpected development his mom was basically the japanese equivalent of white trash so it makes sense and then uh he murders his alcoholic dad and buries him in the yard where he lives and then things take a complete 180 from this wacky fun drama to an absolutely dour depressing story but here's the unique thing it's not like the story transforms no the story remains the same the story's there it's just that the main character is completely removed from it. it he's plucked out of that story and he's tossed to the wayside he, the story is running parallel with him he he just isn't there anymore and of course if you have experienced depression this is basically just supposed to be a mirror of that because when you are in a depressive state you feel completely removed from the things that used to be things that maybe used to make you happy people that you used to be able to connect with you just feel like there's this insurmountable wall there and you do kind of grow desperate and you try to claw at it and the protagonist definitely tries that a couple times but of course to no avail so for the next three volumes we just get to watch this main character stumble down the depressive rabbit hole and just progressively become more and more decrepit quite literally he develops very weird philosophies like uh wanting to murder someone for the sake of it and uh he stops showering he stops taking care of himself he stops caring for his friends which once more a direct reflection of tumbling down a depressive rabbit hole wallowing in that depressive rabbit hole to me at the very least the way i ash i always have visualized depression and falling deeper into it is that there is this hole and this hole is just full of very very sticky mud the more you stumble down the hole the more mud gets on top of you but that mud never comes off the more you stumble down like it would naturally if it, you were actually falling down a hole it stays there it stays there and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds and what happens with that mud builds well you start feeling more and more numb your surroundings become dimmer and dimmer and once you reach the bottom the light the light that you fell from the the very top that you were at is no longer there you're no longer even able to see it because of all that mud so once more uh, the character becoming more decrepit and more hinged of course it's played up for dramatic effect but it really is supposed to be this guy has mental illness and that mental illness is going completely untreated and no yeah this is 100 about mental illness a lot of manga try to be a little subtle about depression and anxiety and the like. They really like to use symbolism. And this one does too, but it's very abrupt symbolism because as soon as he murders his dad, he starts visualizing this kappa, this monster that pops up on the shore. And of course, that monster is the monster of mental illness. It's the monster of depression. And I realize this all sounds pretty basic as of right now. It sounds like, okay, well, yeah, what's so unique about it? Well, to me at the very least, the reason it's so disturbing is the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, that other story is there, which means that you can kind of see what would have been if the protagonist had been able to stick to that script. If the protagonist had followed that story with his wacky friends, maybe they would have had a falling out, maybe he would have fallen in love and he would have had a bittersweet ending. Instead, the protagonist chose to commit murder and that murder was the trigger that offset his mental illness and now he's going crazy quite literally for three volumes we just get to watch his philosophies grow twisted and once people are actually trying to reach out for him of course it's too late because he's at the bottom of that hole and surprise there is absolutely nothing at the bottom 
of that hole. What's most disturbing though, I think, uh, what's most disturbing about him existing outside the story isn't that it's, oh, it's mirroring depression and it's just this visual representation of it. No. What's most disturbing to me about it is that it mirrors suicidal thoughts. Because the thing, at least from my experience of experiencing suicidal thoughts, and I think what drives a lot of people to think those kind of extremely dark thoughts, is the feeling of not being able to affect anything around you. And a lot of stories, once more, do kind of try to uh, rationalize that. But a lot of stories also require the protagonist to be the depressed character, which means that inevitably a lot of the character interactions will surround him will orbit around this character there will be people that talk to him again neon genesis bengalion is a perfect example of that uh, shinji at the end of that story holds the power and holds the ultimate decision making and his actions has to ripple throughout the world and this is just very basic drama of course basic character interaction but this is also what makes himizu effective yes the protagonist definitely interacts with other people but never to an effect that has any real significance. A lot of times he'll interact with them and he'll talk to them and maybe we'll get a glimpse of their lives, but nothing comes off it because the protagonist isn't a hero or somebody who has deep philosophical ideas or ambitions. He's just a kid that is off the deep end, off the grid, a kid that isn't getting the help he needs. There's nothing for him to offer as a main character, which is why he's completely removed from that story. And the reason I say this mirrors depression, this complete removedness, is because when you are depressed, uh, that feeling of numbness grows, yes. But you also don't really want to tell anybody about it. Because a lot of times you hope that people are able to pick up on the cues that you're giving out, on the way you're acting, on, on your face maybe, on the fact that you're not properly dressed. Uh, but depression is a very subtle thing, and it's very personal. It's very hard for people to actually even be able to recognize it off the top. Even if you were to confess your dark thoughts and talk about the things you think about, a lot of people really just perceive it as you having maybe a deep conversation with them and not as an actual mental illness that you're having, stuff that you actually need to medicate or need therapy for. So a lot of times people that are depressed and even even if they struggle and try to give out signals regarding the depression, uh, when they go and notice, they do feel like that. They feel like they've been completely disconnected from their story, from their world. They say, well, I used to have all of these friends and I have family members and I have all of these memories about them, but I feel awful right now. Is there really nobody who can notice that I feel awful right now out of all of these people that I've known for years? And that, of course, just works to weigh you down and it works to work. Uh, it generates that thought, that thought of, well, if nobody can notice right now, I'm sure nobody would notice if I were to just end it all, right? And I think that's why I say that mirror, that perspective from the main character of being completely disconnected works so well for a story trying to mirror what the decline of somebody that has a mental illness looks like. The further the story goes along, the more removed the main character becomes from a narrative that could have been, from an existence that could have been. Uh, and the more his actions have less and less consequences on other people. But that's not to say they don't have consequences whatsoever. because. At the very end of the story, I don't think I need to say what happens. If this is a perfect representation of the decline of somebody who has a mental illness and is not getting help, I think you know what happens at the very end of the story. But before that, we are in reintroduced to a girl that pops up near the beginning and she kind of becomes the protagonist's love interest to some degree. The sad part, of course, is that he's completely gone by then. He has reached the bottom of the hole. And though she tries to help him and she tells him to turn himself in and get the right help and that she's willing to wait for him, nothing comes through. But it's important to note that he does make the effort. He says, sure, I'll do it. Uh, he tries, but... There's just nothing. The, the issue, the illness has completely solidified by then. And the actual ending of the story is disturbing because it's so quiet. It's just, it's just this right here on the screen. That's it. That is the ending. There's no, and then this happened. Or, and this is the t lesson we should take away from this. It doesn't preach. It doesn't tell you the ultimate message, whether it be pessimistic or positive. It just tells you, yeah. This is what happens because it's true. 
a lot of times when we are experiencing depression, we don't come out of it for the better. A lot of times we come out for the for, for the worst. A lot of times we don't come out of it. A lot of times we come out of it the exact same or maybe a little broken or maybe with a little more triggers than we used to. But we very rarely come out of it way, way better than we did. It is not a journey. We are not Buddhist monks going through the mountains self-reflecting. Depression is horrible. <laughs> you don't really get much out of it except self-wallowing and a lot of traumatic memories. That's why I appreciate this manga so much because it's not preaching a message. It's not really telling you. I mean, the protagonist quite literally gets the answer handed to him. This this scene right here, let me go ahead and read you this speech that is given to the protagonist. Let me give you a piece of advice. Now, you are sick. You have so many options for your future, but you're driving yourself into a corner. You can't see around you clearly and are choosing the most dangerous option. You'd better just sit tight and wait for the dawn. Instead, you're crawling in the darkness, panicking and dying. You realize 10 years from now, you could look back and laugh about this, saying, man... I was in deep shit that time. Well, this is only if you don't die. That's it. And that's really just it, right? That is the answer. You are mentally ill. Uh, wait. <laughs> do not do anything incredibly radical. Don't do anything crazy. But here's the thing, right? On the following page, the Yakuza who says this hands the kid a gun. He just hands him a gun, and I don't think I need to explain what that gun is used for at the very end of the manga. And that's the thing. The protagonist is given the answer. The protagonist is given the answer. I mean, it's given. It's just one little page at the very beginning of the last volume, but it's there. That is the answer. And this is why I say the manga is so depressing, because even though you have the answer there, he's also given a gun. And to me, this is kind of just symbolic of what untreated depression feels like, because it is you are flipping a coin twice. You're flipping a coin that determines your mood, and then you're flipping a coin that determines your actions. If the boat land on the wrong side, it's sober. If both land on the right side, congratulations. If one does and another one doesn't, then you remain the same. Of course, I'm oversimplifying it, but it really is all up to chance. And it really is all circumstantial. And it really comes down to people knowing when to step in and pull you out of this. Because a lot of times you can't really do it alone. And a lot of times the further you are into it, the harder it is going to be pulled to pull you out. Yes. And a lot of times, even though there are people willing to pull you out, you are unwilling to accept them like it happens to the protagonist at the very end of this manga. I think what is so unique about Himisu, like I said a little bit ago, is that it is not preaching. It is not telling you that you should regard mental illness this way or that maybe mental illness is all about this or that. It is just an artistic, visual, story-driven representation of what falling into mental illness with no treatment whatsoever feels like. There's nothing else to it. Like I said, the last page is complete silence. It's tragic. It is very tragic. But this is just one of many endings that could have had occurred. And if you have been paying attention to the manga up till then, you would know that. There are chances. There are decisions that can be taken or should be taken. Or maybe you don't notice you could have taken. But they're there. And they do offset like a chain reaction. And the ending you reach when you are in this state... It's very hard to track down. It's very hard to predict. Needless to say, this is a really good manga, but I definitely don't recommend it if you're in the state. Unlike other manga that maybe help you self-reflect on the state you are in if you're depressed, this is just, this is what it feels like. So if you already feel this way, it, it won't help you. You would just be like, yeah, this is, this is what I feel like. Yep. <laughs> the ending is also, like I said, not very helpful at all either, so... Yeah, you're not going to get much out of this if you are in that state. If you have been in that state and kind of want to self-reflect a bit, or if you have never been in this state and would like to kind of know what a lot of people going through this feel like, then I do recommend it. I think it's a pretty good representation of it. That's it. Thank you guys a lot. See you later.